Shut up and sit down. Well, hi all. So this video is part update on my tank project. Just a small update, really, um, relates to this thing. But it's primarily a response video for Christoph Lamer or Lamer. I'm not sure how he pronounces his name. So over here on my tank project, leaning up there against the wall, um, one of the challenges for the tank is the turret. How will the turret mount and still be able to rotate? And you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that has to has to work there. Now I had a couple of ideas, all variations on a slew bearing, uh, rollers and things like that, and I never really worked it out though. A couple of days ago, while I was surfing YouTube, a video popped up in my suggested for you list, and I could tell right by the title of this video that it was my solution. It was just perfect. Uh, the title of the video that it came up is Design a Parametric 3D Printable Slew Bearing with Fusion 360 by Christoph Limmer. So, boom, this is my solution. Uh, I use Fusion 360, I'm no guru at it, um, but that's what I use for all my design work now and I'm getting better at it and I really like it. So this video popped up, so I started watching it and it's like, holy crap. This is exactly what I'm looking for. So these are standard slew bearings. There will, of course, be a link to this video in my description. Uh, so these slew bearings, the really great thing about this and his design is that it doesn't use balls, like a ball bearing. 3D printed balls suck. You can't actually get them round. And the only way to actually have a, a good ball would be to do a lot of after print work. Uh, and I'm just not going to do that. So... Also, a regular bearing has your inner race and then the balls and your outer race all in a line. And they can't really take a load this way. Uh, they're meant to run vertically with the load along your axial line. You can't have it, you know, pressing down. So that's where these come in. This particular type of slew bearing is a load bearing. Uh, it's used on, and as he says in his video, this is type is that's used on like a crane. So you've got a huge amount of weight pressing down on this bearing and yet it can still turn really quite easily. So that's what he takes you through this in this tutorial on how to do using Fusion 360. And this guy's a bit of a guru because if we were to look, he actually starts working at about one minute and 40 seconds into the video. And he's completed the entire design at I think it's nine minutes and 40 seconds into the video and he's done. Now, you can watch this video and go through it and reproduce his design very accurately. In fact, that's exactly what I did. And this is what I've come up with. So this is my slew bearing made off of his design using the exact same dimensions that he's got there. Now, I did have to reprint the barrels a few times. The barrels look like this over here. Um, there's going to be some slight variances in different people's printers, of course, uh, different allowances. So... Using his exact dimensions, these ball, these come out just a hair big on my printer. So I made a change, and I uh, actually it was these green ones that I printed first. And they came out just a hair big at 8.17. So I, I made a big change, and I printed these ones just to see what would happen. And they came out, there was a big gap in here, and they didn't work well at all. So... I found the middle ground and I printed this bearing. Um, it's awesome. I mean, it is so awesome. And it is such an awesome solution. Now, the video is called Parametric. The reason why it's called Parametric is because at the beginning of this video, he shows you... There's things in this video that he shows about Fusion 360 that I had no idea. Uh, for example, there's all of these parameters that you can create and use later on, which is just beautiful. I didn't know you could do this. I'm going to be using this a lot. But with this particular bearing that he designs, he has his numb rolls. Using a value of 20 builds you a slew bearing of this size. If you change that one number to say 40, the parametric nature of 
the CAD software and the way you build this, you, you get a perfectly good working bearing that's bigger. So for what I want to do on my tank track, I would basically use this exact design and just, you know, do like 80 or 90 bear, uh, rollers and I'd be pretty much done. Um, so when you're going through this video, there's going to be times, he's a guru, he's just clicking things and doing things all throughout the video. And you sometimes have to stop the video and, you know, watch like a six second part of it over and over just to try and figure out exactly which one of the constraints he clicked on and where he's clicking in here because he's pretty quick at times. Uh, but overall, this is a really great video. Um, the fact that he shows you how, and there's some really cool math in here that he did that I would never have figured out, like how do you actually figure out the square root of, a, uh, of an ellipse. Um, without this video though, I would have been pretty much, I would have had a hard time doing it. And he builds this entire thing on video in like eight minutes, seven minutes, seven or eight minutes. And uh, it, it's beautiful. Now, it is a bit tight the way I made this. Uh, I could actually add another uh, 0.05 millimeter gap in the grooves here. Um, and this would probably end up being a lot more freewheeling, but I don't really need that. See, the thing is, is if I press really hard on this, this turns really really easily there's no resistance and i'm really pressing on this i'm gonna even stand up i don't want to hurt my neck but i'm gonna stand up and really bear down on it and it turns beautifully easily this is a really great design so christoph lamar if i'm saying that correctly thank you for posting this video it's a great video uh, I learned a lot from you watching how you were using the constraints. Um, I never really used constraints very well in my design work. Uh, and this is an excellent, excellent solution uh, for a 3D printed bearing. Even, you can still even use this bearing this way if you need to. I mean, it's still going to be load bearing. Not a problem. It doesn't use balls. It uses the barrels, which is perfect. So... If you're looking to make any type of a bearing, a 3D printed bearing, I highly recommend you look up this video, the Design a Parametric 3D Printable Slew Bearing with Fusion 360. Because you're going to be able to make any size of bearing you want for your perfect uh, solution. And it's, it's awesome. And of course, when you're making this on my tank project, you know, it's going to be really, really big. And it's just going to be a perfect, perfect solution. So there it is, a, a 3D printed Perfectly working slew bearing. Oh, and like I said, there is no slop in this. None at all. There's no up and down slop, no back and forth slop. There is no slop in this at all. It is a perfect fit. It's awesome. Yeah. Damn good design. Damn good presentation. Um, so there you go. That's my update. Still working on, on, as far as the tank goes, I'm still working on the uh, um, belt design drive system. I'm getting close. Uh, I'm not working too hard at it, though. Uh, we've got some stuff going on. Um, belts and pulleys. 3D printed belts and pulleys. It's coming well. It's coming along. But this is brilliant. So that's my video. Anyways, thanks for watching.